morning, YouTube. Hello and happy Monday. Oh my gosh, how are you? I am so excited. I don't really know what I'm excited about. I'm just excited. I am just excited to be sitting here with you. We have another great week coming on. Um, it's uh, it's awesome. It's just great. I'm, I'm double checking the lighting and I think I like it. And I don't know if you notice or not, but my hair is purple. <laughs> I decided last night, I don't know, I went to bed last night and um, I'm like, you know what? You know what, Lonnie? You need a little change. And so I went purple this morning. And okay, get this. I posted a video. Um, uh, gosh, I, I posted a short where I had one blue eyeshadow and one purple eyeshadow. Okay. And I got, you know, some very nice comments. And one of the comments was, um, hello, Claire. So one of the comments was your eyebrows are a little light. You would look really good with some darker eyebrows. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're absolutely correct. I have been thinking the same thing, but I cannot find my eyebrow pencil, which I need to buy today. And so I was like, yeah, Lonnie, you, you need darker brows. So I was um, getting ready this morning and I'm like, you know what, Lonnie? you can do this. You're very innovative. You can do, you can find something to use as an eyebrow pencil without actually having an eyebrow pencil. So I, in my infinite wisdom, found um, some liquid eyeliner and I'm like, bloop, 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 bloop. And then I'm like, yeah, that looks pretty good. My radical healing rebellion. Good morning. Love the purple hair. So pretty. Thank you so much. I it's been a while since I've done purple and I'm really glad that I, I did that this morning. So I took my eyeliner, my liquid eyeliner, and I'm like, bloop, 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 bloop. You know, I was thinking like I was microblading some in. And I'm like, wow, this looks um, a little intense. Maybe I should have thought about this a little bit better. So I took my little spoolie and I'm like, um, it's Tina says, hi, Lana girl, you look gorgeous. I'm driving and listening to you. Don't know how long I can stay. I love seeing you. Thank you. And Mondays are always my favorite because I know that you're going to be here, Tina. So I took my little spoolie and I was like, thank you. I really like the purple. I'm pretty excited about that. But I took my spoolie and I was like, I, I tried to blend it all in. And oh, my Lanta, I had the worst case of... Um, angry bird eyebrows I had ever had. I looked and then I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? So I like smeared them. So not only are my eyebrows big and bushy, but they were like that big. And it took me, um, it took me like a little bit. So I got my, my halo eye makeup, the, that under eye Halo under eye cream is amazing. It will take off like your little bit of makeup. So I cleaned up my eyebrows. And so I have brows today with my purple hair and I am really liking it. Claire says, my friend went to Pride over the weekend and did rainbow eyeshadow. It looked amazing. Your hair looks great. Thank you. I had somebody comment on that. Linda says, love your, your hair color. Thank you so much. Um, I did um, have somebody comment on that video and what she does, hello Kelly, what she does is she does, um, oh, what she does is an orange eyeshadow with purple liner and I was like, that sounds kind of cool too. So to me, it's just all fun. It's fun having makeup. It's fun doing different colors in your hair. Now, if you remember correctly, I did the permanent um, I wasn't doing the morning show when I did it, but I did the uh, permanent blue hair color. And that took me a couple of months to um, have it grow out. I really like using this overtone product because it's semi-permanent and it's um, it will fade. And it, you know, in a couple of weeks if I don't want to keep it, but I really like it. So I am going to um, maintain it in the shower with the little daily shower. Now, before we get going, and I really struggled whether or not I was going to say anything um, on this this morning, but I think I'm going to. Um, I don't want to be super invasive, but um, her husband did post this on Facebook. 
But Courtney is not going to um, be joining us this morning. She is actually in the hospital. And um, they found on Wednesday, she went to the doctors because she's been having headaches and some dizziness. And I'm just repeating what was on the post. I have been texting her, um, checking in on her, but um, she's been having headaches and some dizziness. And if you're not all aware, Courtney is um, my moderator and she has um, cancer. And she went to the doctors and they found a, um, a strawberry size lesion on her her back of her lobe of her brain and her um, spinal column and they did remove it surgery went fine um, and they are waiting on the test results to see if it was uh, malignant or benign so I want to um, good morning Tiggy so I just you know what Courtney if she if she does pop on or if she does happen to see this I just want you all to be updated on her what's going on with her and that is why she is not joining us today i don't know when she's coming back but i just wanted you all to know because we are a tight little community here and we do watch out for each other and um i would just wanted i just wanted you to know what was going on with her so my thoughts my prayers are with her and like i said i have been texting her she sent me a picture of um before her surgery her husband bought her some nude lipstick and she sent me a picture of that and it looked really pretty on her. So again, my thoughts and my prayers to Courtney and um, we are going to um, do this and um, we are going to do this and we're going to be happy and we're going to be strong and we are going to um, be happy and strong for her. There, I said it. So what's going on it is a monday and um i had a pretty good weekend you know i'm not going to complain about it i will definitely i'm going to i'll text her later today i texted her yesterday and i could tell she wasn't feeling very well so i will um i can message her husband on facebook or i'll just send her a text so i'll let her know that everybody is sending their love but I had a pretty good weekend. I actually went on Saturday. I went and I filmed a new thrift with me. And it was a new place that I had found. And it's called um, the Do It's called Do Gooders. And um, to me, <laughs> I kept on calling it Pickers. And I think Pickers is such a better name for a thrift show or thrift store than do gooders. But you know what? Nobody asked me. Nobody called me up and they're like, hey Lonnie, why should I name my my thrift store? So I went to it and it you'll have to see the video, but it definitely had a a flea market kind of vibe, if you know what I mean. Lots of really cool older vintage stuff definitely didn't want to go there for the clothes hello d shepherd i didn't want to go there for the clothes um just because um they 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 weren't my style but it was a fun video to make kathy says good morning lonnie hope you're well i am i'm super excited to be with you here today we have a great lineup oh really quick i don't know if you saw my post with the um with the schedule for this week's live but i am on standby for jury duty this week so far so good but if something happens if for some reason i do have i mean if i get picked i'll have to go so i'll either do the morning show super super early or i'll do it in the afternoon i'm not going to skip doing our show but I will definitely um, have to change the timing. So if that happens, if I do get called in, if they give my little like, hey, you have to report for jury duty, then I will, um, I'll do a little post and I'll let you know. But so far, so good. So far, I don't have to go in and I'm really super excited about that. And then um, I planted my plants in the backyard, the one that I bought when I did a the video of y'all coming and hanging out with me on a Saturday morning. And um, Indy helped me plant them. She was very much right in the middle of everything. So I got those planted and then, yeah. And so what, oh, and then what I started doing is before I actually come live on here with you is I've started a little, um, a morning kind of little 
shopping thing. It's called Browse and Browse and Brew on Amazon Live. So I'm actually going live on Amazon Live and I'm showing some things that I'm showing all the deals that I find over there. Now, I am going to be incorporating the really cool things I find over here, but I was, you know what? It's something and the reason I'm mentioning it to you is this. I have been telling myself I've been needing to do this for at least six months. And for six months, I have just not done it. And I blame one thing or the other. I'll be like, you know, it's too technical. I can't do this. I can't do that. And this weekend, for something, for some reason, something happened this weekend. And I was just like, you know what, Lonnie? You just got to stop. You have to stop telling yourself everything you can't do. And you need to start telling yourself everything you can do. So I, um, I did it. And it took me two and a half days to figure out how to do it because um, I wanted to do it on my own. I did not want to have to rely on Robert to always be like, hey, Robert, come fix this for me or Robert figured this out, or Robert, Robert, Robert. I wanted to do it on my own. And like I said, it took me two days, two and a half days, but I did it. And I, uh, and so what I'm just trying to say is that if you have something out there that you're telling yourself that you want to do, but you find reasons that you're not doing it, stop telling yourself things to stop telling yourself why you shouldn't do it and just do it. Tina says, I saw your video about your next tattoo. When are you getting that girl so excited for you? You know, it is something that is in the works. And here's the problem is, is that Brian, my regular tattoo artist is in Chicago. And I'm really very hesitant about having anybody tattoo me, but Brian or Austin. So I have to either get over that fear or I have to wait for Brian to get back or I, I, you know, I'm kind of at a stumping point. And then also too, it's, um, I don't really have the extra income to do it right now. And I'm not going to go cheap on my tattoo. So funny you should mention that, Tina, because two things about that is, and I was going to save this for tomorrow, but I think I'm going to tell you about it today because you mentioned the video. But I actually had one of, um, somebody on that video, somebody on that video is, it just, it just floored me. Um, I'll, I'll read to you what, what the comment was. And I, I will hear your opinions on that. So her, the comment on that video was, um, I don't like neck tattoos, particularly on older women. It makes you look ghetto. Just my opinion. Most men don't like neck tattoos on women. Don't do it if you might be in the market for dating. And I'm like, what year are we in? You know, what decade are we in? At what point? And, and you know what? And, and, I, and I didn't lash out at this person. I'm just like, my response was, is I don't live my life by what I think a man may or may not like about me. You know, that's just the whole thing. That's what tattooing is really all about. It's my self-expression. And if I decide to get a tattoo going up the side of my neck, that's my self-expression. And if a man is going to look at me and judge me by that, I don't want that person in my life. And that's just the whole thing. It's, it's like, when in our society are we going to know that we don't have to, we as women don't have to live our life by what we think a man is going to like or a partner or a girlfriend or whoever or a significant other. It is just a matter, um, it is just a matter of what makes you happy. And it's that outdated thinking is what I fight against every single day. And as far as you know what it would make me look ghetto, then thank you. You know what? I don't think looking ghetto is an insult. I think, you know, if I, I, I'm not that cookie cutter person. So to me, it was just, it blew me away. Truthfully, I was sitting there last night and again, I'm like, 
did I like go and sl- did I find a time machine that nobody told me about and I accidentally went back a couple of decades or more? But what that is the most outdated thinking I think I have heard in such a long time. And it came from a woman. And I'm just like, no, we should stop. We should stop telling each other this. We need to tell each other to embrace your individuality and be you. Ugh. So Tina says, nobody asked for their opinion. Men I know find them sexy and who cares what, uh, <laughs> what a man thinks. Um, I am so tired of others' opinion. Linda says, I know a lot of men who love neck tattoos on women. How shallow was that person? You know, truthfully, it was, it, it, tr- I, and here's the thing. It's, it's like, it was just, as far as I was concerned, it was just a negative comment. And it, it's unfortunately something that I live with. And, and I just wanted to share it with you because, uh, again, I wanted to be known that we don't have to live by in fear of what somebody may or may not think about us as people. And that's what it really comes down to. I mean, I lived a narcissistic marriage and I was always worried about me doing the wrong thing and getting, um, getting put down for it. And no matter what I did, I got put down for it. And I hid my self-expression and I hid who I was because I thought the more invisible I could be, the nicer he would be. And it wasn't the truth. It was actually quite the opposite. The more invisible I tried to be, the more power he had over me. So there's a whole lot of things that go with self-expression and being bright and bold. And that absolutely 100% is one of them. All right. So now, did you all hear that Elton John did his last concert? I am so incredibly, like, I missed it. I've never been to an Elton John concert, and now I never will be. And I'm like, oh, Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond won't, it, it can't perform anymore. Billy Joel. I mean, these are people who, if I had a time machine, I would go back and I would see these performers in concert. You know, I would see Prince in concert. I would see Whitney Houston. I would see just, I would go to more concerts. And I just saw that and I'm just like, oh my gosh, Lonnie, you know what? There's just some things that you can't undo. And I'm pretty sure I cannot be like, excuse me, Mr. Mr. Elton John, um, I missed your last concert. Would you mind doing another one? And it was just like, I don't know. It, it kind of made me like, ah, I probably should have spent less time drinking and more time going to concerts. But you know what? Hindsight is 20 20 on that one my friends and then one other thing I saw that was going on is I don't know if you all follow celebrity gossip or anything or celebrity news but Jonah Hill is absolutely in the um in the hot seat right now because his ex-girlfriend is coming out and being like yeah no he's not very nice and here's the thing it's like we need to realize that these people are actors you know they portray a character that doesn't necessarily mean that they're these people are nice in real life and you're going to run across some people who are super nice i mean i think tom hanks looks like he would be super nice and then you're going to run across some people who have some not so nice tendencies and i think it becomes really shocking when people realize that um that they're human and again sometimes they're not very nice humans so we have to remember you know what they're actors kathy says many performers are at retirement age if you like blues rocks have listened to joe bonamassa he is great Ooh, you know one of my favorite concerts and he's i don't know if you all have ever heard of him before but it was mathis yahoo and he i saw him at the house of blues with robert And it was the most amazing concert. And it was small. It was intimate. And he was like the only person on stage. And it was just an amazing concert. So I absolutely, I think out of all of it, oh, you know who I saw in concert? And I'm very fortunate. And I just heard that they are doing their last tour. And if you have a chance to go see them, 
100% go, it's the Eagles. I saw the Eagles probably mm, 15 years ago and the Dixie Chicks opened up for them. And I know that they're no longer called that. They're called the Chicks, but and I appreciate that. But the Eagles were, I remember sitting there in the audience and um, I was listening to them and I was looking at them and I could close my eyes and it was like I was listening to them on the radio. They were that good. They sounded exactly like they were on the radio because sometimes I see some performers and I'm never going to be like, oh, that person's too old to do anything. But I've seen some performers really struggle with age, keeping the same sound that they had when they were younger. So to me, it was like, yeah, you know what? They, they were older than I am. They're older than I am still, but they sounded a uh, amazing. So if you have a chance to go see them, I 100% recommend that 100%. Linda said, I saw Alice Cooper when I was in Berlin. He was in his 70s and is amazing. See, now there are definitely some artists out there who can absolutely rock at any age. And then I've seen clips and maybe it was just a bad day, but they were not doing so great. And you know what I saw? I saw a TikTok of Shania Twain, where people were like just leaving her concert because she was struggling so bad. And she's not that old. And then you have like Dolly Parton, and I think she could sing forever. Ugh, they're going to be in Lexington only three hours from me, but I don't have the cash right now. Yeah, no, I mean, I, that's the thing. So here's another thing where we're talking about concerts and having cash for it. When did you have to almost take a small loan to go to a concert? I mean, the ticket prices are insane. I love me some performers, but I'm not going to spend that amount of money to see them live. I am so sorry. I cannot justify the amount of money that people spend to see like some performers. It's like $4,000. I don't have that kind of money. And to me, it's like good for you. I mean, if you have, <laughs> if you have that amount of money, I say go and do it. But for me personally, I'm like, yeah, no, I'll just find them on Spotify and I'll listen to them that way. I'll sit out in the backyard and I'll like um, put on my headphones and pretend like I'm in an amphitheater or something like that. Tina says, I have to go, Lonnie girl. So sad. We'll watch you the rest of the night. Please give Courtney our thoughts and prayers. Keep us informed. Love you, Lonnie. Absolutely. I will. Tina, I know you're driving. Be safe. And I love you dearly for everything that you do. Tiggy says, Billy Joel was worth every penny. Yeah, I could imagine that. Oh, you know who else I would love to see is, and if the tickets weren't through the roof, I will go see her is Lady Gaga. I think she is an exceptional performer. And she is somebody who I would really like to see live. But um, Tiggy, I don't know if you saw um, that Billy Joel, what he does is he won't sell his front row tickets. And he doesn't sell his front row tickets because he wants to gift them to people with really bad seats because he says that he got tired of the people who could afford those front seats looking bored at his concerts. And when he looked out, he wanted to see people who were appreciating him and his music. And I thought that that was a really cool kind of like way to do it. But also, too, it makes me think like, you know what, some people do have that amount of money where, you know what, 10 grand for a concert is a drop in a hat. And so I guess it's all perspective. But yes, Billy Joel would definitely be a cool concert to go to also. Now, um, I did post on here on YouTube and it's on iTunes and Spotify also, but this week's podcast now, this week's podcast was a little bit different because it kind of got really emotional and it kind of got a little raw. And by that, I mean, um, Robert and I were having our discussion. And what it is, is I heard it's more expensive in the States than in Europe. Yeah, Linda, sometimes I think everything is more expensive in the States. But it was this, this week was my turn to do the podcast. And I picked the subject of like, when you're trying to have a communication with somebody who you don't have good communication with, like me and Robert and Brandon, we are working on our communication. 
Um, if you are listening for the first time, I am a recovering addict. I drank um, for the majority of my life. I've been sober now for nine years. But when Robert and Brandon were younger, I was an alcoholic mother. And it is extremely difficult having an alcoholic parent because I had an alcoholic parent and I know how bad it hurts and I know the damage I did to my children. So we were talking on the podcast about communication and Brandon and I seem to have a little bit easier time with it because we have very similar communication styles and Robert and I struggle with it a little bit more because we have different communication styles. So um, I, 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 we did the podcast it wasn't the most touchy and feeling warm hearted podcast, but I decided that I wanted to still post it on the rate on iTunes and, and um, Spotify. And I still wanted to post it here on YouTube because to me, it was a raw look at the realities of rebuilding your, your relationships after addiction. It's not all fun and games. I mean, it's not all, you know, hugs and running through fields of daisies. I mean, things have to be said and feelings have to be hurt. And how I came out of it at the end of the podcast was um, sometimes I have to tear things down to rebuild them. And sometimes I do have to, uh, I have to rebuild my thought process. And I know a lot of times it's like, it looks like a one-way street and it is a one-way street. It is a one-way street with me and my children. I am rebuilding my relationship with them. It's my burden to do that. It's not their responsibility to be like, I need to rebuild my relationship with my mother. Even though they're very open to it, I do take the lead because it is my duty as a mother to do so. So I have a tendency to kind of put my emotions out there on my sleeve quite a bit. And sometimes, sometimes it gets stomped on and sometimes it's necessary. And you know what? I never, ever, ever, ever look back at my kids and be like, no, you shouldn't have done that. You should be kinder. You should be more considerate. You should be this and you should be that. Because I'm going to tell you right now, no child is ever, ever asked to be born into an addictive family they are brought into the situation. So they do get that, they get that out. They, they don't have to be kind and they don't have to be compassionate. You know what? It's not their job. So for me, it is like an absolute necessity. And again, like I said, it was a pretty rough episode, but I'm really glad that we did it. And um, I wanted to post it one way or the other, because to me, Again, being transparent and being real is what my platform is all about. Kathy says, Linda could be my husband spent um, 200 uh, lira. I'm not too sure what that is. That is that a pound, 200 pounds for two tickets to see Joe Bonomassa here in the UK a few, few months ago. So um you can tell I'm not really used to um, currency in the UK. Ke um, Kelly says, have to go. See you tomorrow. Hopefully, take care. You know what? Hopefully, I see you tomorrow, too. You be good. Have fun and have a good day. So that is, um, that is what happened this weekend. Now, let's talk about that doctor visit I went to. It's hot. It's going to be a hot day here today. I went to the doctors on Friday. Remember I told you about that and I was all nervous and we played all sorts of games because we were keeping myself occupied, which I think is a lot of fun and we are gonna play games again because you know what? It is just fun. Sorry, yes, pounds. No, 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 Kathy, don't, you don't have to apologize, that's me. You know, I, I knew that, um, I mean, I know that in the UK they have pounds. I was just trying to figure out if that was the symbol for it. So he went to the doctors and if this is a new doctor, I've never been to him before because I, um, I had to switch insurance and I'm sitting in the office and you know what, it was a nice office and I could tell that he was going to be super progressive by like the little signs that he had all over his office. He was like, if you, you know, this is for unity, this is for, um, we want to have a good experience. We want to share this. And so I'm all like, yeah, this guy, he's going to be okay. Um, Linda says going to see Devo in a few months, Kathy tickets were 60 pounds and I thought they were expensive. 
I would love to see Devo. So I'm in there and I fill out all my paperwork and the doctor, um, actually the nurse practice, practice, practitioner came in first. She asked me all the interview questions. I gave her everything. And then the doctor walked in and I swore to myself, I wasn't going to say anything. And I swore to myself, I was not going to be my mother. And I tell you right now, I got possessed by the spirit of my mother. And as soon as he came walking in, I looked at him and I went, well, aren't you young? And I'm like, oh my gosh, Lonnie, why are you saying that? Why are you saying this to this doctor? But he seriously was like Doogie Hauser age. And I'm like, I'm like, so then I'm like feeling really obvious and I'm feeling really awkward. And I'm like, Lonnie, you just called this guy young and he's a doctor and he wants to have, you know, he wants to have your respect. He doesn't want you saying how young you think he is. So then I'm like trying to back my way out of it. I'm like, oh, that's just because I'm old. And then I'm like, don't call yourself old. And then I'm like, I just think it's really cool. You know, I was expecting some old crusty guy, but you came walking in and I'm like, oh my gosh, please stop talking, Lonnie. You know what? I know you don't get out very often, but you have to have more social, um, you have to have more social tact than that. So he comes in and um, we go over everything and what we're going to end up doing, what the game plan is, is that I'm going to get an MRI on my foot and my lungs. And the reason that I am having my lungs having an MRI is because I smoked. Because when I was drinking, I was smoking and I did smoke um, a good chunk of my middle adulthood. So... I was kind of like right on the fence whether or not I needed one or not, but I was just like, if I could get one, let's just get one. You know what? Let's just, let's just get this out of the way. I mean, I'm already predestined for COPD, so let's just check and see what's going on. So I'm going to have um, my lungs MRI, MRI'd, my foot, because I have that foot problem. So we're going to do that. I'm getting my blood work done. And I have to fast, so I don't, um, I'm going to do that like first, first thing in the morning because I have to have my coffee. And then um, I got my referrals for these little tags that are these little um, things that were on my chest. Remember, I was worried that, you know, it might be skin cancer or something like that. And um, uh, but he said these look fine, but I'm still getting a referral referral to a dermatologist to do an all over skin check so I can be um, careful of that. Linda says, haha, I didn't know who Doogie Hauser was, but my partner who used to live in Arizona told me all about him. Yeah, it is. Um, oh my goodness, I can see his face and I am blanking on the actor. It's it, Neil Patrick Harris. There you go. It's Neil Patrick Harris played a doctor and he was supposed to be like, I don't know, 12. And I still remember watching the show. But yes, he was, I mean, the doctor looked like he was in his, in his 20s. And when you're almost 60 like I am, that is young. So we are getting to the main subject of today. And I'm taking my time getting there, but we are getting there. But we're talking and we have this whole game plan and um, just kind of offhandedly, I was like, well, is there anything you can do about this extra nine, 10 pounds I'm carrying around as a joke? And he's like, well, you know, you can do intermittent fasting or the Kate, the Kato diet. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, you could do intermittent fa fasting. And I'm like, no, no, no. In my mind, I'm like, no, this is where you say, Lonnie, your weight is fine. You don't have to worry about it. And he did not say that. And so I was like, that's not the answer I was looking for, Doogie. I wanted you to tell me everything was fine and I didn't have to worry about it. And so I was like, why didn't he say it was fine? Why didn't he just be like, yeah, don't worry about it, Lonnie. Just go ahead and eat all those brownies you want. You're, you're, you're perfectly fine. So I came home and I Googled it and I'm going to show you what I Googled. 
And let's see here. Boom, boom, boop. I, this weekend, did a lot of work for um, making sure that our graphics are going to look good because I don't know if you were with me last week, but I was, um, I had all sorts of technical difficulties and it was really upsetting me. And I like our show to be seamless and I like it to be just a fun show. So I did a lot of work over the weekend and voila, look at that. I don't have to worry about where it's like, you guys talk amongst yourself while I figure out all this problem. Mm -mm -mm. I gotcha. I gotcha. So I came home and I looked at this chart. And so I'm like, okay, so let's take a look at this. I'm like, I am five foot two. I am, I'm not that big. And uh, I don't know. I, I would say I have a small frame. Um, Keto and intermittent fasting is a great pairing. I've lost 42 pounds since January doing them together. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, because I just started. And so I really appreciate that because here's, the, I, I'll, I'll get to how it, the intermittent fasting didn't work last time. And I know why. So I'm five foot two and I consider myself a sm between a small and a medium frame. I mean, I'm not super petite, but I'm, I'm not, don't have a large frame. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. The ideal weight is 108 pounds to 121 pounds. I weigh more than that. So then I keep my little arrow going over and I'm like medium frame, which let's just say, for example, I mean, so let's just call me medium frame. I am 130 pounds. And I'm like, Lonnie, you're right at the cusp of being too much. <gasps> Courtney, oh my gosh. Courtney, I, I, to, I updated everybody what was going on because Dan um, put it on Facebook, but oh my gosh, uh, you're going to make me cry. I did not know that you were going to be able to pop on, but Courtney's here and you, the, everybody, everybody is going to ha tell her I will, I will wait until we get, um, until we have this taken care of. So, do, do, do. Ah. now how do I do this? Oh, there we go. So Courtney's back. It's okay to update. Okay, good. Yeah, because I didn't want to say anything, but I figured I only repeated what was on Facebook. So I thought I was okay. So Courtney, we are talking about my... Um, the simple fact that the doctor encourages me to lose some weight. Um, so we are, um, we were looking at a chart and the chart, I'm going to put it back up just in case you all want to see it. But the chart right here, I, I, I need to lose weight. That is just all it is about it. I mean, I want to go into my, my late 50 I'm gonna be 59 but I want to I want to go into it with more with without having to struggle with my weight that is what I'm trying to say so you can take a look at this chart I mean I just pulled it up off the internet but yeah I was right there I, I don't have any more weight that I can put on and still be considered healthy and again, it just kind of bummed me out. And I'm like, all right, Lonnie, there's just no, there's no, there's no other way. Um, hey, hi, Ugg, don't we all? <laughs> yes. But there's just no, I, I can't, I can't blow it off anymore. I cannot be like, well, you know what? That's just the way it is. You know, I, I'm fine. I'll be this. I'll be that. Nope. Mm -mm. So I have tried intermittent fasting before. I have a go around with it. And I was like, I didn't do very well. And the reason that I didn't do very well is because when my little window opened up for eating, I was like, I'm just going to pull a chair up to the refrigerator and I am just going to eat everything I can find. And then I'm going to have every dessert I can find because I'm going to store up all this food for the 16 hours that I'm fasting. So I did a little bit more research because I wanted to make sure that I knew exactly what I was going to do. And 
oh my gosh, look at me. I am just going to move this and let's bring this over. So the concept of intermittent fasting is, this is very, very basic. And this is just before noon, you have water, you have coffee, or you have tea, which I can do that because I'm not a real big breakfast person. But I was finding that what I was doing is, is I was coming home from the gym and then I was, um, I was just kind of like loading up on carbs and then um, I just started eating at starting at six o'clock in the morning. I just never stopped eating. So now I'm not going to eat before noon and I do have my coffee. Then between noon and eight, which eight o'clock is way, way, way too late for me to eat. I'm on the old lady schedule. So I need to eat. I need to be done eating by six o'clock. So I will start eating a little bit sooner. Um, I usually start eating around 11 and I will start off with something healthy, like a protein bar. So that way I'm not like just absolutely just craving food. Then about two or three, I will eat uh, my one healthy meal for the day. And then right before six o'clock, I'll have a real healthy snack. Like I've been having, um, some yogurt and banana and granola, something along those lines. And it has felt really good so far. And then after this says eight o'clock, but mine would be after six o'clock, um, you just have water. And this, I can do this. I know I can do this. It's because I just have to make sure that I don't start eating until about 11 o'clock. And then once I do, then I want to make sure that what I am eating is good. I can't just sit there and be like, well, I am just going to eat whatever I want because I can. So let me, okay. So if that doesn't work for you, if you're like, no, Lonnie, that's not really within my schedule, there's other ways to do intermittent fasting. And I'm going to show you what those are. Another way to do it is to look at me, I'm all about graphics. I am so proud of myself. But you can do like an every other kind of day fasting, which I think is a little bit more extreme. I like a little bit of a less, I like to eat a little bit every day. But you can do this one where you eat normally on one day and then day two, you only limit yourself to a couple of hundred calories, which would be like nuts and a banana maybe. D. Shepard says, my husband does intermittent fasting. He eats at um, 11 a.m. and then at 6 p.m. See, that's just about how I am. I will give myself that window between 11 and 6. And I, I mean, I've only been doing this now for since Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Today's my fourth day. But it, it, so far, I really like what I've been doing. So this is another thing that you can do. This is another form of intermittent fasting. And again, it's just kind of like whatever, um, whatever really is going to work for you. Then there's another way. And another way to do it is, this is the one that I'm doing. And this one is called the 16-8 diet. And it's basically you fast for 16 hours and you eat for eight. I can eat for eight hours. No problem with that. But I go a little bit, um, I don't, again, I can't eat at eight. So I can, I can technically start eating before 11, but I don't really like to because I don't like to eat before I come and do my live. And by the time is that, I'm just going to start eating at 11 and then I'm going to end at six. But this it gives you just that, that eating in the middle of the day. But what's important is you cannot do it the way I did it originally, where you just sit there and you're like, you know what, I'm going to eat whatever I want. It doesn't matter because I'm going to fast for 16 hours. That's not going to work. If you don't eat the right foods in that those eight hours that you're allowed to eat, it's for nothing. So make sure that you still keep a healthy diet with your intermittent fasting. 
Um, Linda says, I think I would binge if I fasted for 24 hours, but the other one looks doable. Absolutely. And that's, that's kind of like how I was thinking, because to me, it was, I, I couldn't, I, I would have, by, by the time I got to eat the next day, I would have, I would overeat. And I just think that that's like you, that's exactly what I was thinking. But there is one other way to fast that I want to show you about. Um, nope, that's the same one. So did I actually, that's the same one. I'll, no, I guess there is only, there's a couple of different variations, not huge variations, but you can change like, one was called a warrior diet where you actually eat, um, your window is even shorter than the eight hours, but just take a look at it and whatever you think is going to work for you, then that's what I think you should work do. Now I'm going to say this and I'm going to say it again. Anytime that you do anything for your health, if you feel like you need um, to talk to your doctor, I always recommend talking to your doctor. Um, I mean, he's the one that recommended it for me. So I feel comfortable doing that, but I never, ever, ever want to be on here and be like, I am a, a nutritional specialist and this is what I recommend for you. That's not what I want to do at all. I just want to share my journey and my journey is this. So I do want to let you know that I do recommend if you um, have any sort of health problems or anything, do talk to your doctor because I don't want to lead you down the wrong path. Now, I found... I always need help. I mean, it's, I always need help. So what I did is I went on here, I went onto my phone and I found a couple of apps that help me maintain my fasting schedule. And two of them that I found and I downloaded two of them. One I had to pay for, one I is a complete free one. And the first one that I tried that is free, it's called Zero, Z-E-R-O. And it's basically just a timer that tells you when your 16 hours is over. And that's, that's perfectly fine. You know what? I just need this little like reminder that I can't eat until my phone tells me I can eat. Love it. It's free. Super good. But I was like, well, you know what? The last time I did this fasting, it didn't work for me because I ate really bad. So maybe I need more help with um, my fasting. So I got another one called Fastin, which is fasting without the G. So it's F-A-S-T-I-N. And this one is a subscription. So I actually had to pay... Gosh, I think it's like two bucks a month, something along that. And what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to, again, it has the little wheel, boink, has the little wheel, tells me when I can eat. But this one has a, something where I can track my water intake because water intake is super important, boink, right there. And I'm like, okay, I like that. I don't know if I need that for two, two bucks a month, but I need it. And then it has this little calorie intake. And I'm like, that I like, that I can do because I want to make sure that when my eight hours is up, I eat the right things. So I paid the two bucks because I wanted to see the difference because I wanted to be able to report back to you and let you know which one I like the best. Hold on. And while in theory, I did like the idea of tracking my food and now I have a water mustache. I like the idea of tracking my food and my water and my fasting all in one app. What I did not like about the one that I had to pay for, the one that's F-A-S-T-I-N, is the simple fact that when I went to go do my calories, when I went to go like... Um, pick out my food, there was no food. I mean, it was very limited. And it was, it was like, 
the food that I did find, it was almost inputted incorrectly and it kept on giving me all these warnings that I was eating the wrong food. And I'm like, it's a carrot. I mean, how can a carrot be wrong? So what I'm going to do for me personally is I'm going to cancel my subscription with the one where it tracks my food and my water um, at the same time. And I'm going to stay with the free one, but I am also going to be doing my um, my calorie counter app, which is this my net diary. And this is where I am going to track my water. I'm going to track my food intake because I only want to have, I think it was like 1500 calories in my eight hours. And I want to make sure that I don't exceed that because I do want to not do the whole like, you know, um, where I just binge and I eat all the wrong foods because if I have to sit there and if I have to like not get to eat, I want to make sure that when I do eat, I eat the right things. Now, I do have a couple of new recipes I want to share with you because here's what's happened. It's like, I feel like I have a, a goal. I feel like I have an answer because I have been struggling on here for months being like, I don't know what to do about my weight. I don't know why I keep gaining weight. I just don't know. And I felt like I was just ping ponging all over the place. And I really feel like I have a good plan for me to lose those 10 pounds because I want to go back to this chart and I want to be realistic. And realistically, it's, I'm again, I'm only five foot two. I, at the max, I should weigh 121 pounds at, at the max. And I'm like, I can't even remember the last, I think I had, I weighed 118 but when I had COVID. So this is something that I have been struggling with for a while. And I'm like, yeah, Lonnie, you can do this. You can do this in a healthy way that I'm not going to be considering it as a diet. I'm going to be considering it more as a, um, as a lifestyle. And I think that this is something that I can keep up for a while. And with that in mind, I came up with some new recipes that I really want to show you because they are really looking yummy. And don't forget, I will put the link for my um, Pinterest down below when we are done. But I do want to show you these two new recipes. So hold tight. We got you. We got you here saved in morning YouTube show. And boink, boink, boink. We're going to come over like this. And we are going to do that. And we're going to do this. And oh my gosh, y'all, look at how, look at how good this worked. Oh, I spent so many hours this weekend trying to perfect this for you because I really did not want it to be like last week where we were just struggling all day long. So the two recipes that I got is, you can see right here, apparently I'm really into this chickpea avocado and feta salad because I saved it twice, but I do have some avocados that I need to take care of. So I'm going to make this for lunch today and it's going to be nothing more than avocado, cilantro, green onions, feta cheese, chickpeas, and lime. And I'm like, this sounds so good. Now, but you have to remember, this is my one big meal. And I'm like, is this going to be enough? So what I will end up doing is, is I will either put this on a, like an avocado toast and kind of do it like a sandwich, or I might do it with like a plant-based chicken patty and have this and, um, have it that way. But I thought this looked really good and really fresh for, um, for summer. And then another chickpea recipe, which I wanted to share with you 
is you take chickpeas. This is actually a video, so this is pretty cool. But you can take chickpeas and the cauliflower, like I showed you how to do it, and then you put it with your avocado. And she's going very fast, but it is like a Euro sandwich. And you have that with the chickpeas on its own or the chickpeas and cauliflower. And I think that that is such a good alternative for having to not have meat. And I think it's a good meal that will keep me, hold on, where did you go? Where did you go? Where did you go? You got to come back, there you are. See, look what happens when I get to be all technical. We have video, we have pictures, we have graphs, we have conversations. We get to hang out and just be like, this is so much fun. And it is so much fun. So, Courtney, I don't know if you heard this or not, but we are going to be hot this week and I might have to actually turn on my air conditioner um, probably starting Thursday or Friday but it just gives me the opportunity to wear some new styles and I'm just going into it positively but I do want to tell you about two videos that I am going to be working on today and then we will talk about this week's um, schedule coming up but I am going to be going on Friday. I'm going to go to my first tattoo convention. I have never been to one. And yes, I am bringing you with me. So Friday afternoon, I'm going to hit the road and I'm going to go up to LA and I'm going to go to a tattoo convention and I'm going to do a video there. So I figured that would be a fun thing to do. And then on Saturday, I got um, early access to Nordstrom's half excuse me, I got early access, access to Nordstrom's anniversary sale and I get to go before the store even opens. And it is just such a cool experience because they have like, um, they have like little snacks, they have like a piano player, they have people walking around with like little mimosas, which I will not partake in, but it's just a really cool vibe and they have a lot of things on sale. So I thought it would be fun if I hit the road there, took my GoPro and just be like, yeah, you know what, we're going to hit the road and we are going to go and check out the early access to the Nordstrom's yearly sale half year, something like that. So that's what we're going to do. And then what is going on here? Mm -hmm -hmm. So what else was I going to say? I was going to say something else and I cannot remember. I cannot remember. Let's make sure. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow we are doing tattoo court. And what I mean by that is, is that I have been watching way too much Judge Judy. And I have also been watching a, a spinoff of Judge Judy called um, tribunal justice. And I did not know this, but, um, as Linda says, wow, that's amazing. I have been to two tattoo conventions in London and one in Edinburgh. That is so cool. See, I'm very excited. I'm very excited just to kind of go wander around and just, um, get to see what the vibe is all about. But I've been watching this, um, it's called tribunal justice and it's with judge Judy's son, which I did not know and two other judges. And they like listen to the case. All three judges talk to the people and then they give their ruling. Well, one of them was about a tattoo and I thought it would be fun tomorrow to do something a little bit different for Tattoo Tuesday is we are going to redo the trial. We're going to, I have my thoughts, I have my opinions and I'm going to kind of present it as the evidence that I saw and then um, I will let you know whether or not we agreed with um, their ruling. So we're going to court tomorrow. Hopefully I'm not in real court. Then on Wednesday, I'm going to, um, I think I'll buzz my hair again because I do like to keep it nice and short. And then we're going to talk about some new skincare and some new makeup out. Fri no, Thursday, we are taking a look at Free People Fall Fashion. And I got this little catalog, catalog 
got a lot of cute stuff in it. So we're going to take a look at that. But I'm going to try to find some similar items that are on Amazon also, because some of these items in here were a little pricey. So we're going to have a little comparison on that. And then on Friday, we are going to do Trivia Friday, because I had so much fun doing that. And so I think we're going to do trivia. I know I have the escape room, but I'm not too sure how that's going to work. But we'll definitely be doing trivia. And that was it. Man, I have been, this is my third live this morning. I went live on TikTok, live on Amazon, and now I'm live on YouTube. Uh, Indy's already gotten her walk. I've already been to the gym, and I've already done a video. So it's been a productive day, and it is 10 o'clock. So I hope that you had fun. I appreciate you, as always, hanging out with me. I do love my purple hair. And I hope I've given you motivation that if you have been wanting to try any color in your hair, that you grab some and just do it and have fun. So until tomorrow, remember, be bright, be bold, be brave. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, as far as all of those intermittent fastings, find one that works best for you. I really like it so far. I feel like it is something that I can do long term. And I hope that um, you find something that you want to do too. So I'll see you all tomorrow. Just remember, I love you dearly. Courtney, if you're still here, I'm giving you a big virtual YouTube hug. Love you dearly. And I will see you all tomorrow. Bye, everyone.